Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about drama in the classroom. Have you heard this song before? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to play? We're ready, we're ready, we're ready to play. Ready, action! <laughs> this is the title song of Ready, Action. So, why do we use drama? There are a lot of different skills or different classes. But why we use drama for learning language? There are a lot of reasons. First, drama brings real life situations, right? Like uh, somebody making friends or somebody taking their food to grandmother and somebody's running away from something. <laughs> so it introduces a lot of real life language, like, can you catch me? Catch me if you can. You cannot catch me. Hey, don't touch me. Can I be your friend? Don't talk to strangers. Oh, something is falling from the tree, like this. These are all what we use in everyday, everyday life, right? And we can create different scenes. So we have to use our creativity or imagination. But by myself, no, we all do it uh, together with classmates. So it helps students learn collaboration. They know how to work with other people. And they learn how to express their feelings because they learn different feelings exist in different stories. At the end of the class, they're going to memorize all the lines or at least their own lines. So they build up their confidence because they can say at least some lines in front of other people. And it's really, really fun. Students love to study with this drama, but actually they don't think it's study. They think it's a playtime. Sarah Phillips, who's the, uh, she's the author of Drama with Children. She said, dramatizing means that children become actively involved in a text. So they don't just learn, they involve, they're involved in the text. Ready Action has two different types of stories. So first one is classic. Classic has starter, four books, and level one, four books, level two, four books, level three. Okay, classic is a little bit easier because these are all the stories that you might know or your students might know. So uh, when you choose books, parody is a little bit difficult. Classic is easier than the parody version, okay? You know the turtle, the rabbit and the turtle here? Oh, Jack and the Beanstalk. The ugly duckling. So these are all the classic stories. And parody, they're a little bit different. You might think that they're all familiar, right? Oh, you know some stories, right? That's right. But it's different at some part or at the end. So we twi uh, changed the, the ending or we gave some twist. So students think, oh, it's a different story. I wanna know more about the story, okay? But it's a little bit difficult because it's not the story that we used to know. <laughs> so when you plan your class, you can plan uh, for like A classes or over than that. 
but that's fine. You can always add up some reviews and memorizing lines, preparing props with your students, and then you can sing songs and dance. Also blocking where, how they move, where to move, things like that. And then you need a lot of rehearsals. Then you need performance day too. So this is the syllabus. Mm -hmm. Lesson one, you're going to introduce the book. You're going to talk about the book cover and the characters. Two to seven or two to eight, you're going to do the daily lessons like storytelling, picture walk, drama activities, sing and dance, reading, practice. A lot of reading practice, that's, that's really important, and workbook. And when these are all done, you're going to go to Reader's Theater. Reader's Theater means it's kind of reading and performing at the same time. Students, students perform, but they have the script on their hand, <laughs> but they have to act. But, but uh, if you have more time, then you do a lot of rehearsals and pick the roles and change, change, and maybe you can do audition. Then at last you can do performance. Okay, so what should we do in the beginning of each lesson? Every lesson you have to do this. This is really, really important. That's warm up. Why is it important? Think about your students. They have, they don't have much experience in drama. So they might be afraid. Oh, what if my teacher pointed at me and I have to sing in front of other people? Oh, I'm scared too. <laughs> So we have to break all these, you know, scared, you know, things in our mind. So that's why we do a lot of warm up activities to make students feel safe and relaxed in our class. And it also helps students raise their energy level. Sometimes students feel like, oh, teacher, I don't have any energy. I don't want to play. But after uh, doing these warm ups, then they can, you know, do a lot of activities. But they're mostly non verbal because it, it gives non threatening environments for young learners. Basically, they cannot speak well. So don't do verbal activities. Okay, it's kind of pressure for them. So you can do a lot of like activities like seven calm trick, mirror mime, tongue twisters, jump in, jump out, walk and stop, zip, 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 catch my knee, group knee, and generation circle. Okay, I cannot explain everything today, but I will show some pictures. This is mirror activity. Okay, oh, I want to show some uh, class, I mean, PowerPoint. So you can just follow the PowerPoint to do your class. Let me show. This is the ugly duckling. We're currently making all these PowerPoint for teachers. This is the ugly duckling. I picked it up because I like it. <laughs> I like the story. This is lesson one. So lesson one, you always sing the song, the title song, you know, the song that I sang. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> with your students. And then you say three tools of acting, which means body, voice, and imagination. These are the three things that students must bring with them when they come to your classroom. Also, this is seven count shake. So I wrote down all, you know, Oh, how to do it here. So you can just follow it, like count one, two, seven, and shake the body parts, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then left leg and right leg. You count one to six, one to five, one to four, one to three, one to two, and then one. You just need to follow 
the procedure. Then that's the warm up. And this is like wake up, walk and stop, clap and jump. You just say that and students just listen and follow. And you pass the sound. So please read the procedure and you can do it with your students. Okay, then you're going to explain a little bit about story elements. Story has blah, 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 characters, settings, and plots. And you explain what characters, what settings are, okay? And you give some quizzes. Then you talk about book cover because it's day one. When you click it, you see things, right? So you ask questions. For you, we wrote down some questions so you can just randomly choose any question and ask and talk a lot about the book cover. And once you click oh, another one, then you can find another piece of the book cover and talk more. So students have more interest in the book. Then you jump into the story, you ask title, maybe some students know Ugly Duckling, right? But some might not know. Talk, talk, and then we have sound effects. These, these are the thing that we provide in our CD. So you just play the sound. Play the sound. And then talk about the sound with your students. Okay, like this. With their body part, express with their body. And maybe they can write some words like wind. Or they can draw wind. Or you can show some pictures like this and match. Okay, I like that part. And introduce characters because it's the first class. They don't know who are in this story. Okay, like this. Okay, and you talk about the characters again because it's, it's important to memorize because when they're reading the story, they they know the characters. They should know the characters to understand the story better. And then they can do a little bit of game, who's missing? And then they close their eyes and find the characters like this, okay? And then you can do the workbook at the end of the class. There are a lot of things, right? Okay, like this. <laughs> then when you finish all, then your lesson is finished. We have eight different lessons. So you can just follow them. Nothing difficult. All the warm ups are in the story, in the PPT file. And these are extra activities that you can do with your students. Okay, I usually do puppet theater with my students, like this black paper, white paper, and move, move. And you tell the story with the students, or you can use the you know finger puppet or chapstick puppet, paper pop, paper cup puppet, or reader theater. This is what I really like because you don't need to prepare any props or memorization. Read it, please later, <laughs> and you can make some props with your students. For starter level, you can find any kind of crafts in the PowerPoint in the file. We put at least one craft. And you can do picture storytelling. You give post-its to your students and they draw like beginning, middle, end. Or the, the most impress, impressive uh, scene or important scene. Or the scene that they really liked, like this. This is a story map. You can do it with your students, I did it. And drama board and stage performance. I always record my students doing drama, like this. And we made story map. And this is ready action award. You can make it with paper cups. 
And this, these are uh, uh, frequently asked questions. Not enough rows, you can double cast. And one student too many lines, double casting. And students, oh, blah, 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 please read it. <laughs> okay, so you can find online resources uh, on our languagewordbooks.com. And we have a lot of resources here. Okay, thank you.